Prime Minister Andrew Holness has announced plans for the Integrity Commission to oversee the negotiation process for the Montego Bay Perimeter Road project. That announcement has done little to appease the opposition, People's National Party, which has been critical about the process. Kalisha Williams reports. The construction of the Montego Bay Perimeter Road in St. James is said to be of national importance, acting as a bypass to reduce congestion in the western city. In April, the government entered a contractual agreement with China Harbor Engineering Company, Czech, to carry out the $220 million U.S. dollar project. But as negotiations got underway, concerns. The view that somehow the government is trying to avoid scrutiny, transparency in the procurement process. As it turns out, the process that we are now using adds greater scrutiny and transparency than what was the original proposition. The original proposal was for the Jamaican government to negotiate with the government of China through the China Exim Bank to finance the project. But Prime Minister Andrew Holness said that usually means using China's materials, Chinese contractors, and a slate of Chinese workers, among other things. So what's the plan now? In the same way as we did under Mid-P and under the South Coast Road Improvement Project, it won't be friend and company selection. There will be a process of limited tenders where four or five or six or a group of contractors are asked to tender on components of the work. So there is a competitive element in the tendering process. Now to ensure greater transparency, Mr. Holness said the government will be inviting the Integrity Commission to sit as observers during the negotiations. My own view is that we should be able to, as a government, do this without the Integrity Commission. They would come in if there is an issue. But the Integrity Commission is there to give confidence. And so I have asked the Permanent Secretary to invite them, if they so wish, to, 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 to come on board. Because we have nothing to hide. However, opposition leader Mark Golding is still not pleased with the current process. According to Mr. Golding, taxpayers will not benefit. While that is good because it suggests some transparency and fairness in the selection of subcontractors, it will not anywhere to the benefit. It will not benefit the Jamaican taxpayer because the contract price is that which the taxpayer will have to pay the main contractor who is being selected without any competitive bidding process. So any savings that may be derived from a competitive bidding process for subcontractors will only benefit the main contractor and not the taxpayers of the country. Construction of the bypass is expected to begin next year. Kelisha Williams, TVJ News. And for the latest in business and finance, here's Cody and Barrett with the Business Minute. In the world of finance, Jamaica Association for Microfinancing, JAMFIN, has announced July 2022 as the new registration date for microfinancing. Micro lenders will now be required to register their businesses with the Bank of Jamaica under the Microcredit Act. During a webinar on May 13, its members were informed about the act and the requirements for registration. Negotiations for a new wage and fringe benefits agreement for public sector workers for the 2021-2022 financial year could be completed in a month. The Jamaica Confederation of Trade Unions met with the Ministry of Finance last week to discuss how to proceed with talks concerning the 2.5% wage offer. President of the Jamaica Civil Service Association, Onil Grant, says they want to have negotiations concluded as early as possible. Proven Investment says due to the continued impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, there will be a delay in the submission of its audited financial statements for the year ended March 2021. Proven cited further challenges resulting from work-from-home orders and the delay in the receipt of audited financial statements from associated entities. The company anticipates its submission on or before July 5, 2021, in keeping with the extension given by the Jamaica Stock Exchange. And that's it for the Business Minute. I'm Cody Ann Barrett.
In sports, the rivalry between excessive force and double crown is set to be renewed in the feature Labor Day Trophy, an overnight allowance contest going over seven furlongs at Caymanas Park on Tuesday. Denise Walters has a racing preview. The imported excessive force will be looking to go one better after running well in defeat when coming to this level on May 8. Trained by Philip Fiani, the four-year-old Chestnut Colt gets an ease in scale with claiming apprentice O'Shea Nugent aboard. The two-to-one anti-post favorite who last won impressively on April 17 in non-winners of four company is at home in this present group and could return to winning ways. Second in the anti-post odds at five to two, Double Crown returning from a four-month layup is hunting a hat-trick of wins. The former classic campaigner conditioned by Ian Passard left in good form in January and has reported well at training. Despite a shouldering top weight of 126 pounds, Double Crown to be ridden by Omar Walker could fight this out successfully. The likes of proven campaigners Another Bullet and Uncle Frank alongside Eagle One also have a look in in the 11 horse field. 4.35 p.m. is post time. Meanwhile, Mr. Universe is the 6 to 5 overnight favorite for the $1,800,000 high claiming contest for three year olds and up going five and a half furlongs round. With the leading rider and joint champion jockey Anthony Thomas aboard, the fast chestnut horse should have his rivals off their legs from early and could go all the way. Eight horses are set to line up at 4 p.m. First post for the nine race card is 12.30 p.m. Denise Walters for TVJ Sports. And that's the Midday News. I'm Giovanni Dennis. Join us at 7 for Primetime News. On behalf of the news, sports and production teams, have a good afternoon.